it's a warm salad. What? What are you I doing? Was... Well, it had been sitting in a bag for like an hour oh, and a half, oh, two hours at this point. At this point, I'm angry at you for this. Uh, oh, no, I'm saying this is cost of living. Michael Hing. Otherwise, you're on like commercial TV, mate. Buy yourself a sandwich. On Triple J. Good afternoon. Michael Hing and Lewis Hopper hanging out with you. And, Lewis, it is our very last Wednesday. Very packed show today. Uh, Wednesday means one thing and one thing only here on the Drive Show Triple J. It means that you and I will be hearing some incredible stories because we're doing this. Yeah, that's right, Michael. For as long as any human being alive can remember, every Wednesday you and I have asked people to send in their very best story on a topic, Mm -hmm. and the very best of those has been put to the radio and decided, uh, voted on by one person, Judge Jess Perkins. Jess Perkins. Now, today we do it for the very last time. So if you are hoping to get your story onto Simper the Jest before it finishes forever, Mm -hmm. today is your very last chance. Yes. And how can people get their stories on the radio, Lewis? Well, they can text in their stories to 043 975 7555. You forgot the... No, I nearly did my own number. That's why. What's the number again? 0439 Uh 75 7555. Not 0431 something. It's a different number. Anyway, the important thing is... 0431448. (laughs) I don't know whose number that is, Michael. Now... (laughs) The panic in your eyes! Please. panic in your eyes! Anyway, sorry, sorry. Yes, we're we're getting distracted. Doing simple just today. The the topic is the end. The end. The end. We are ending our radio show. We want to hear your stories about things you've ended, relationships ending, um, jobs you've ended. Um, Why did you leave your job and what happened when you did? Yeah, your last day at high school at a... Oh, at primary school, at kindy? Yep. Um, stories from leaving university. Stories when you didn't realise something was the end, you know? Mm. When you li- later realised, oh, that was the last time I ever did that, you know? Yeah. 0439 75 725 is the- our text line number. Send in all your stories. The end of a holiday. Maybe you were on holiday and it ended prematurely. Sure. In fact, any sort of premature ending. Yeah. Like what, Lewis? Any of them at all. Any premature... What kind of premature endings well, are you talking like about? Like if you're on holiday and for some reason you got injured or whatever, you had to come home. Any early. other examples you want to give about That's premature anyone endings? That's anyone I can think of. All right, get your stories in. Jess Burgers will be joining us after four. Also, Lewis... Um, we're going to be doing some statue stuff because we met the Lord Mayor of Newcastle this morning to install our statues and you've got a, an Ida Buttrose uh, update for us. Very busy show. Busy show. This is Hilda Hoods, your Triple J. Hobber and Hing. Hummina, Hummina. <laughs> on Triple J. That is Florist, Forest Claudette on Triple J with two years before that you heard Glades out of Sydney, Eyes Wide Shut, named after the horny Stanley Kubrick film. So, Eyes Wide Shut? Yeah, it is. And we kick things off with the Hilltop <laughs> Hoods. They love a sex party, I assume. Laced up the name of that one. My goodness. Oh, go on. Uh, you are with Hobber and Hing on Triple J. And uh, Lewis. Yes. We are crossing things off our bucket list. That's right. Yeah, we're down to the final two. And if uh, things go smoothly, we could have them all sewn up by today or tomorrow at the latest, mm-hmm. which is lucky because tomorrow is our last day on radio. Now, uh, Hingers, one of the things that I said I would clear up for you this week yes. is the long-running feud you have with, uh, I guess, newspaper editor, beloved Australian... Mm-hmm. Ida Buttrose, yes. chair of the ABC board. Chair, like the big boss. The, 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 basically the person who's in charge of the ABC, responsible for the entire organisation. Yeah. Now, uh, what happened was, for people catching up, uh, years ago during COVID, um, we'd come in here and, you know, Ida wasn't coming into the building very much, so I just started parking in her spot. Yeah. And then over time she started coming back in and then got a bit annoyed that I was parking in her car space because she has a reserve space for Ida Buttrose, chair of the board. Yeah. And uh, then... I got in so much trouble, but no one really likes to talk to me about things. People just talk to Lewis about them. Well, that's because they know that you are a bit of a mess and that really telling you to fix something mm. won't get it fixed. Well, yeah, that's probably <laughs> true. <laughs> but we're talking about, you know, when I get a phone call from the chair of the, uh, from the big boss of the ABC saying, hey, the chair of the ABC board is angry at Michael, can you sort him out? We're talking about not just the chair of the ABC board, mm. but Ida Buttrose, you know, we're talking about uh, she's, got, she's an OBE. She's an officer of the Order of the British Empire. Hot damn. She's an officer. She's got an, uh, an Order of Australia. She was awarded the Centenary Medal. She's in the Victorian Honour Roll of Women. Ooh. She's a companion of the Order of Australia. Yeah, you know what I mean? She's done all right for herself. Yeah, she's done really well. She's also had the, a TV show made about her, like a biopic about her life. I mean, it's a good one too. Yeah, look, she's, she's doing great. But the important... Uh, 
Yeah, so I guess she was mad that I kept parking in her space. Yep, yep. And uh, You said you would sort this out. Yeah, and we talked about it a bit on the radio and I will say her um, her grandson listens and he, he did, um, he dobbed on us and we I don't know him well but I... If we ever meet, we'll have to have some. So, what did you words. do? What, when you say you sorted out, what did you do? I made. I just went straight to the top. I just. I just called Ida. I called Ida. Well, what this morning? This morning, yeah. I, I called her, mm-hmm. and I wanted to. You know, I knew that if this was up to Michael, there'd be some rigmarole, some sort of heist, or some sort of backhanded loophole. And I just want you just like you know what? This is our last day on the radio tomorrow. Let's end this like adults with okay. an adult conversation. So, did you record the call? I did, of course. Did you tell her you recorded the call? Oh, good point. <laughs> I might not have. I mean, what are they going to do, fire us? <laughs> uh, all right. I think she would know. She yeah. would know. Yeah, she's a, right. she's a, she's media, she's a media professional. professional. Yeah. I okay. assume she would assume every... So, you've called her, yeah. you asked her about the parking space. Yeah. Are you going to tell me what she said? I'm going to tell you. No, you can hear for yourself after this from Claire Rosencrantz. It's screw time. It's Hobber and him. What are they going to give Papa? <laughs> On Triple J. It goes like, nah, nah, nah. On Triple J. Before that, you heard Claire Rosencrantz with Screw Time. Yeah, with Hobber and Hing. And Hing is, uh, just two things remain on the Hobber and Hing bucket list uh, for us to tick off before we finish up on Triple J tomorrow. Uh, one, get statues made of ourselves. Yeah. And two... Resolve your long, ongoing feud with uh, beloved a- Australian legend Ida Buttrose, yes. chair of the ABC board. Mm-hmm. People are saying, you know, sending in facts that I missed about Ida. Cold Chisel wrote a song about her. Uh, apparently Chopper Reed has her name, ta- or had uh, her name tattooed on his ass. Oh! So this is the kind of person we're talking about. She's uh, a, yeah, she's one of the top dogs. One of the big dogs. Yeah. Uh, and you um, rubbed her the wrong way by... I, to give some context, the ABC car park is very small. Yep. It's very hard to get a park It's competitive. Here. It's very competitive. You've got to get in very early, uh, but there are only two spots that are permanently reserved. Mm. One is for Ida Buttrose. Mm-hmm. One is for the boss of the ABC, David Anderson. Yes. So it's uh, basically the king and queen of the ABC. Yeah. Everyone else, it's a it's a dog-eat-dog free-for-all as we scrap around for parks. Yes. Uh, so Michael, when the car park was full, would sometimes take Ida's park, hoping she wouldn't come in. And sometimes she wouldn't, uh, but then sometimes, sometimes she, she would. would. I mean, often she would. <laughs> yeah. And then I, there would be a, a tiff of sorts. Uh, so I wanted to try to resolve this. Um, you wanted to park in her car park again before yeah. we finished. Yes. And I thought, look, w- rather than just steal it, what happened if we if we just went the adult way, Michael, and put just put a phone call in? to the chair of the ABC board, beloved Australian legend, uh, Ida Bartrose, OBE, OAM, etc. Uh, and I will say there's a few other things to mention uh, before I play you this phone call. Um, obviously, I'm angry that I get dragged into this, but I needed to be the adult to fix it. Also, we did talk a bit about her grandson, mm. who was the one who would tell on us. Oh, because he listens sometimes. Then yeah. he'd say, hey, Grandma, they've, talk- been, they've been parking your spot again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, we talk about... Um, him as well. Okay. So here it is, the phone call I had with Ida Buttrose, chair of the ABC board, earlier this morning about Michael Hink. <laughs> Ida, hi. It's uh, Lewis Hobber from Triple J here. How are you going? Um, very well, thank you. Good to hear. I uh, wanted to give you a quick call because I know there's been a bit of, I, I, I guess, tension between our radio show and you um, ever since my radio co-host, Michael, stole your car park. Uh, we were talking about it on the radio, your grandson heard it, you found out. All I know is that the next thing was I was getting a call from David Anderson, the managing director of the ABC, to tell me off. And so <laughs> I just wanted to clear the air before we finished and make make sure there was no bad blood. But to be honest, just between you and me, I don't even care if there's bad blood between you and Michael. Well, look, actually, there's no bad blood between either of you, okay. really. I mean, if, if Michael had asked me, <laughs> I would have happily let him have the car park because... I do realise sometimes the car park is full uh-huh. and um, one one day I was in there and I noticed that it was very full indeed and the sign was up, car park full, mm. and I thought Lee Sales has once parked in my spot. Um, is that right? I didn't know it was her, yes. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I gave her a call and I said, look, the car park's full. I said, I'm going to be leaving this afternoon and... And I said, if it's still full when you come in, please feel free to park in my spot. I'll ring security and clear it. So if Michael had let me know about his dilemma, I could have fixed it. Unbelievable. So he could have got the sales treatment. 
He could have. Yes, that's right. Wow. But instead um, he chose violence. <laughs> <laughs> He's chose to trespass. Yeah. Well, look, obviously, um, you know, we're, we're finishing up at the end of the week and I know that it's a dream of his to park his mum's car in your car park one more time. How do you feel about that? Look, I'm sorry you're both finishing up, but you'll be missed because you've been you've been great entertainment. So I hope wherever you're going and whatever you're doing, it all works out well. Thank you. But look, I tell you what, the last day is Thursday this week, isn't mm, it? it and is. So, look, I'm going to be in Ballina on the 10th of August for my uncle's 100th birthday. Oh my God! So yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? That is and amazing. my grandson. And my grandson, Jack, who keeps telling me what you're doing on your program, <laughs> yeah. will be there also. Is that right? The and snitch. Th- th- that's right. <laughs> and we're going, to be, we're going to be listening to your last show on Thursday. So, look, I tell you what, as I'm not going to be there at the ABC, he has my permission and I'll clear it with security wow. for him to park in my spot. Oh, I of our tries. This is, um, is going to make a young man's dream come true. <laughs> my farewell gift to Thank the you. team. Wow. That's extraordinary. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for taking the time to chat. I appreciate it. Um, uh, congratulations to your uncle. A hundred's an amazing achievement. Please tell your grandson um, next time, uh, snitches get stitches. <laughs> I'll pass the message on. And in the meantime, every best wish to you and Michael. Oh, thank you, Ida. Much appreciated. He's done it. Lewis. He's I mean, done it. I, I will say at the end, it did sound like he threatened her grandson, <laughs> which... Well, look, you know he's he's caused us some some problems in the shout past. out to Jack. No, and I don't I don't I've never met Jack, fo- yeah. but I'm sure he's a lovely lovely man. Yeah, and the thing we want to focus on really is that I know Butros just said that I'm allowed to park in no spot tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Do, uh, he, I don't know if you know this. I had a plaque made because I was planning on stealing it. <laughs> so do you reckon I can still put the plaque up? Yeah, because she's got a plaque that says her name. I can yeah. put my plaque up just for the name. Course, yeah, yeah, yeah. She. I think she said. I mean, I'm reading between the lines here. Go hog wild for a day. Go hog wild. Go hell for leather. Michael, park with freedom. You Lewis, can... thank you so much for that. That's just genuinely a very nice thing you've done there. Yeah, isn't it? You, mm-hmm. you can just drive in tomorrow. Yep. You, Ida Butters will have cleared security. It's like it's She'll like, be at 100th birthday. Yeah. It's like getting a, a motorcade. You've done a great work. You've thank you so much. Great this, stuff. And this is what happens when you just put a call into the big dogs, you know? <laughs> I should have asked for a raise for our last day. <laughs> oh, well, didn't think about it until right now. Oh, well, next time. This is The Moving Still. We love Ida Montrose. That's Post Malone on Triple J, owner of a $2 million magic card. <laughs> Morning, the name of that track. Uh, you are with Hobber and Hing and Lewis. Do you think, just quickly, oh, I yeah. know we have talked about the um, $2, $2 million, million Lord of the Rings magic card that he bought. Do you think, as someone who loves Magic the Gathering, uh-huh. I won't dwell on this for too long, mm-hmm. that somebody spending $2 million on a Magic the Gathering card is the sign of a person who's happy? I think for him it is. Interesting. Because he has $100 billion. Yeah. So for him it's not it's nothing. He doesn't care. Yeah. He's actually doing it to make the make that guy's life, the guy who's selling it to him, you know? Do you reckon? Change his life. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I, right. think, I think Post Malone's happy. Okay, yeah. that's I mean, good. you know, as happy as anyone who's rich and famous can be. Sure. Um, I think there'd be pressures to come. Look, we can't get bogged down it. That, yeah, I just wanted a quick one yeah. one, one answer. So, Michael, yeah. in 20 minutes' time, Jess Perkins will be joining us for the very final time here on our show uh, to, as we say goodbye mm. to one of the truly great radio moments, uh, Simply the Jest. And I say that um, because it's the only good thing we do. It's the only good hour of radio we do uh, all week. And we've been doing it we're doing it for about two and a half years now, maybe three years now. We started. Something like that. Yeah, a long time. And uh, each week we get people to call in with their wildest stories on a topic and we've done all kinds of topics. We did um, planes, um, trains, automobiles. We've done like 130 episodes. It'll take you a while to name Maybe all more, things. maybe more than that because there was a bunch of ones before you even had the podcast. Yeah, oh, there's true. There's so many episodes of this. And each week, genuinely, we get stories where I'm like, that's the best call I've ever heard, mm. you know? Mm. Um, and so what um, the wonderful producers here at Triple J have done is put together just a little montage of... The very best calls on Simply the Jest. Here they are. Now, Lewis, we've also received some late breaking news. Jessica Perkins just texted me yes. and says she has, quote, horrific food poisoning, it's the worst timing, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> Hit out of nowhere, not sure what's happening, no good, no good. So... That sounds like a mayday. Reese, was it you who called last week who shat into a bag? <laughs> it was, yes. Yep. 
Yeah. Don't I, I like recognise Reese from Cashmere? <laughs> <laughs> like it might be a fancy fabric, but these stories are the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> the guy's kind of coughing and snorting. It's pretty gross. And uh, he kind of hawks up some phlegm, sort of chokes on it and, like, coughs it up and accidentally spits it on the lady having a nap. Oh! oh! Thank you. No! She wakes up from her nap. She notices this, like, goopy phlegm sitting on her sweater, and she must have thought it was hers because she slurps it up. Oh! Why did our producer put this through? I nearly threw up. This is... Oh, <laughs> I still so might, to be honest. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my That's life. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. The car rolled a couple of times oh. with us all in it. Mum just seemed to get out of the car and she, like, pushed the car over, pushed it back on its wheels. No! Like, this is the story! Side. Yes! And my mum pushed it. And got us out. Yeah, it was pretty no. freaking amazing. Oh, yes! So this is this it was is like the... the Incredible Hulk. It what? was like wow. There's yeah. also now a Saudi prince and urine, and you love piss. <laughs> I do love piss. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be known. Perko loves piss. Used to keep pet snakes and used to keep their food in the fridge, and then had flatmates move in, and they went to have Chinese for dinner, and I used to defrost the rats in a Chinese takeaway container. They got Chinese one night, took oh. the leftovers for lunch. What do you think they it ingested? Much, well, it would have been rat juice. Oh. Yeah. Oh. We've had some crook stuff on this show. <laughs> but rat juice? Uh, I had to get a uh, spear cut out of my throat. Oh! Whoa. What? Oh. We, are, we are all over the place wow. today. Todd. All right, well, thanks for your call, Todd. Um... A few years ago, I was on the way to uni. A bus was coming, <gasps> like, pulling into the station, and um, it rolled over my arm and oh. my leg. How do you feel on buses now? <laughs> yeah, fine. They're useful. You see me? <laughs> Yeah, I was um, driving home after a game of footy just on the freeway. I felt a little bit snotty, so I blew my nose and had my eyeball pop out of my head. <gasps> um, thought, oh, well, and then just pushed it back in with my hand. Oh! Oh! Primus! Primus! There's a legend at my workplace that my boss stuffed $8.20 in 20 cent pieces in his foreskin. Steve O. You know, you don't have to text in. <laughs> I'm an adult webcam performer. One of my highly regarded finishing moves is uh, the art of setting one's privates on fire. Whoa! Just before finishing. What did your housemates say when they walked in and saw your hand and crutch aflame? Hey guys, well that's interesting. I guess it can wait. <laughs> What an incredible, horrific, disgusting and beautiful collection of stories. Thank you so much for sending them in every week. And we will say in 15 minutes mm -hmm. we will be doing Simply the Jest for the very last time. If you have a story about endings or the end, farewells, goodbyes, anything at the end related, 0439 75 755. Yeah, we'll get into those in a moment. Right now, this is Rosalia. You're on Triple J. Uh, by Rosalia on Triple J. You are with Hopper and Hegan Lewis. We're getting uh, set for Simpler Jess happening at four o'clock with Jess Perkins. Um, but to do that, we just kind of uh, played out a little montage of some of our favourite calls over the last couple of years doing Simply the Jest. Mm. And uh, look, there's been some reactions on there, on the text line. Some people texting in saying, uh, look, I hate you for <laughs> replaying that phlegm story. That's from Georgia. Someone else texting saying, no warning at all for the most horrific story I've ever heard. On Simpler the Jest, the flirt, the... the Slurp phlegm story still haunts me. Mm -hmm. And someone caught, and this is not a text I've made up at all, this is a real text from someone called Jess Perkins <laughs> who texted in that just and just says, that phlegm story almost made me throw up again. Yeah, G'day, Perko. <laughs> G'day, Perko. Um, welcome back. Yeah, it is, um, in all of the years, I think rat juice was for a while the most disgusting. Yeah. And then uh, phlegm, phlegm slurp, slurp came yeah. through and really... Uh, in the post. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, but look, it's lovely to see some familiar names texting in um, for the for the fi for the final uh, ever. Simply the jest. Mm -hmm. There's so many great stories across the years that come that just immediately come to mind. So I I can't wait to uh, to do this for one last time and hopefully um, yes. create some incredible, more disgusting memories. That's right. This is going to be the end of Simply the Jest, and that is the topic for this week's Simply the Jest. So getting your stories right now about the end. Oh four three nine seven five seven triple five. We'll be joined by Jess Perkins in about fifteen minutes' time. 
Dom Dollar there. Pump the brakes here on Triple J with Hobber and Hing and Michael. I got a feeling. Starting at the ends of my fingers and going all the way to the end of my, the follicles of my hair. I can feel our stories are rumbling. For the very last time, there are stories in the air. After this, narrative will be no more. The concept of a beginning, middle and end, a complication of sorts resolved by characters, it will be no more! I think what Michael's trying to say is uh, this is the last Simply the Jest. The last Simply the Jest of all time. And, Lewis, the topic for this week's Simply the Jest, the final one we will ever do, is the end. We the want to hear stories about the end. The end of a relationship, the end of a job, the end of a friendship. Get your stories in 0439 75 755. Yes, Jess Perkins will be joining us right after 4 o'clock. This Slowly, slowly. Triple J Breakfast. It's Dave and Beck here filling in for Bryce and Conchetta and Thursday's show is shaping to be whoo, an all-time great because we are getting brand new music from Teenage Jones. Yes, Teenage Jones are coming through, dropping some new music. They also have a very special announcement that we can't tell you about right now, but I swear to God, all will be revealed on Thursday's show and it'll be worth the wait. Beck, how are you feeling about this news? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool, I guess. Oh, yeah, I should explain. Beck got a makeover from resident Triple J emo Emmy Mac, and I think it might be working. Uh, Beck, how are you feeling? Dead inside. <laughs> Great success! Breakfast, weekdays from 6 on Triple J. Hover in here. Did I get a bud crab to root? Is that going to be your question, Lewis? Uh, well, <laughs> yes. It's harder than it sounds, boy. <laughs> yeah, okay, good stuff. <laughs> You gotta tie up the pincers, I guess, or maybe they're into that. I don't know. Yeah. Look, I <laughs> on Triple J. Good afternoon. You are Triple J. Lewis Hopper and Michael Hing with you for the very final time on a Wednesday, which means we, for one last time, have headed down to the basement here at ABC HQ and gone into the cupboard and thrown open the door and let out the animal. That is Jess Perkins because in a moment we will be getting your stories for the very final Simply the Jest. Yes, the topic this week is the end. So we want stories about the end of relationships, the end of work, uh, the end of a uh, a friendship, the end of a family. Do you know what I'm seeing a few of which I hadn't thought of and I quite like? The physical end of things, the end of your hands, the end of your toes, Mm -hmm. the end of of your nose. Actually, someone has sent in... um, I don't know if we'll get this person on, but they've sent a story about the end of their penis yep. and it might be too crook. Yep, quite a good chance for that one. The end of your hair, maybe? Yep. Uh, and any ending would do, 0439 757 5. And someone's saying when this does end, mm. why don't you sell Simple the Jest to one of the commercials, monetize the assets, send the corporation out on a high. Look, the, the reason we can't do that is because Simply the Jest requires Triple J listeners. It really does. Triple J listeners <laughs> have a level of gronk in them to do wacky, crook stuff, the commercial listeners just wouldn't have. There isn't a single other radio station in the world mm. that you could do this idea yeah. at the kind of quality yeah. that we get to do it here it's because crazy. of Triple J listeners. So Unrivaled. We wouldn't... Um, but then again, we we would be just selling the idea and then letting it be shit. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a bad idea. Uh, we'll be met getting Jess Perkins in for just a moment for the last time. What? In just a moment, for the last time. Mm-hmm. After this, it's Maisie Peters. It's Hobber and Hing. Dr. Carl, start the machine! On Triple J. Facilities with lights up featuring Channel Trace. We also played you Maisie Peters. You're just a boy and I'm kind of the man. Hobber and Hing with you and for the very final time. Roll out the red carpet, unlock your cupboards and put on your tiny little hats because toot toot, the skipper's here for this. Simply the jam. Better than all the Judge Jess Perkins, the immortal, joins us <laughs> for the very final Simply the Jest ever. Mm. Hello, Perko. Hello. Is it possible we have too many in-jokes going <laughs> at the same time? Never. <laughs> I mean, that kind of does... You would suggest- say that. That's such an orthos thing to say. I knew it. It does suggest that this show has run its course, that it can just be in jokes on repeat for an hour. <laughs> um, how are you, Perko? I'm great. I mean, I'm out of the cupboard, hopefully for the last time. Um, I assume I'm let free into the woods now after this. Yes, you but... have earned your freedom. <laughs> into the woods, <laughs> yeah. specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You're not fit for human consumption, but 
<laughs> You're okay out there with the birds and whatnot. Yeah, I'll live a beautiful, peaceful life out there. It'll be so nice in the woods. Um, well, today, the episode theme for Simple Jest is the end. And, uh, Perko, it's fitting because it's our last episode of mm. this wonderful radio segment. Do you have a story about the end? Um, one time uh, I was held captive in a cupboard by two <laughs> radio psychos. Sure, sure. Okay, no. just say Hamish and Andy. <laughs> I can't really. I mean, I, I don't think I've. Um, I don't tend to burn bridges, and I think I. Oh, I think yeah. I should. You know, mm. I have just like walked out of a job one time, like just packed up a box of stuff and left. That's sort of the most dramatic ending I've had, and I, and it's made me reflect now that I think I need to start really torching some bridges as I as I go. <laughs> well, I uh, was a bridge Michael, in front of you. Yeah, Michael could um, provide you with the gasoline. I think yeah. he's pretty good at it. I um I yeah I torched a bridge. Oh, I don't know if I torched a bridge. A bridge was torched on me. Uh-huh. Um, oh. My very first job in television was at a show called Good Game. Um, which um, I probably shouldn't have named, but here we are. <laughs> anyway, it ended. It ended really poorly there. I had um, didn't have a great time at that job. He lost and, all um, his lives. Yeah, <laughs> didn't have a good jo- <laughs> didn't have a good time there. It's a video and, game. And um, friends with some people there, not friends with some other people who worked there. Anyway, one of the final things that we did at Good Game when I was there uh, before I left was uh, we did a live show, like a big kind of like kind of like the Hobbit and Hing live shows we did, but for video game nerds, right? You know, 2,000 people, really big, really fun. And at the end of it, the, the, the Bar Joe and Hex, who were the main hosts, oh, they yeah. would stick around and do signings. And uh, the producer at the time, the EP of the show, she said to me, um, you, you, you've got to go and in case anyone wants us to get a signature from you, you should go there as well. And I was like, I'm just a bit player on this show. I don't think anyone wants a signature from Michael Hing, you know. Mm. I was a nobody this time, you know. She goes, no, sit there, people are going to want it. So, so Bajo and Hex, everyone's going to have to get their, their photos signed and stuff. And then I had to sit on a side table next to them. <laughs> oh. and no one wanted. Oh. Right? And that's fine. Like, I know, I know who I am. I know what my place is in this, in, in, in this hierarchy. That's kind of just the entertainment world. And I was just copying it, right? But then Ross Noble, the comedian, was on after us. Oh, yeah. And they needed to, like, push people through the venue. Like, hey, you guys have got to hurry it up. And so the EP goes... Michael, you've got to hurry up. There's no one in front of me who wants to sit my signature. <laughs> so she's yelling at me, being like, you've got to hurry this up. And I'm like, this is a nightmare. <laughs> and so she goes, you're holding up the line. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, and she's trying to, like, make sure everyone else sees what she's doing is the good thing to do. So she goes, actually, you know what? Here's a stack of photos. Walk the line to the very end and see if anyone wants you to get a, <laughs> a signature from you. And I was like, that's a psycho thing. She goes, she goes you got to do it. So I, with a handful of good game headshots, oh. walked a line of fifth or maybe 1,200 people at this point and individually said to them, hey, do you want me to sign this photo? Not a single person <laughs> wanted my autograph. And that was one of the final times I worked at good game. Oh. <laughs> Humiliating stuff from the ABC. Oh, 1,200 no's. Yeah. yeah. Just seemed like, who are you? I'm like, oh, I'm one of the bit players on the show. We don't care. Move it along, buddy. <laughs> Not even a pity yes. No, sure. not a single. I'll At one point, one. one lady got her son's Game Boy and said, yeah, he'd like it, and the kid started to cry. <laughs> and I was like, I, I won't sign his Game Boy, that's fine. Oh, my God. It was truly humiliating. <laughs> anyway, that's my end story. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, I've got a, a really quick one. I once cut the end of my finger off. Mm. Um, I was uh, in my, because my dad was an architect, so he used to make a lot of those models, mm. like little mm. house models. Um, and so I was, I don't remember, I, for some school project, I was making a model um, downstairs and just with an X-Acto knife went straight across the tip of my um, left pointer finger. Oof. And my parents talk about it all the time because my reaction when I went into shock and realised that um, my pointer finger was hanging on by a thread mm. is I, I assumed an eerie calm <laughs> and, and yelled <laughs> from downstairs, Parents! <laughs> Parents, <laughs> there's been an accident. <laughs> As if I was some sort of like Dickensian <laughs> um, sort of butler. But there parents. is something, yeah, a bit more like concerning about a kid yelling parents. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that child is being possessed <laughs> yeah. by a, a dead six year old from 1892. 100%. They're like, why don't you yell out mum and dad or just help? Parents, parents, excuse me, uh, parents. parents. Ringing my little parents' bell. Oh, oh, man. All right, let's get into it. Our first story for the very final episode of Simple Jess comes from Tim in Canberra. G'day, Tim. What is your end story? 
Uh, so I'm a plumber by trade. Hey, by plumber. trade. By trade, always. <laughs> and so I had to go around to a client's house to give them a quote to replace some taps in all their hand basins. Uh-huh. It was a rental property, so I've gone around there and I'm speaking to the, the, the renter at the time and I've looked at it everywhere and I've come to the end of the job and I've said to her, is there any more taps that I need to look at? At that point, she's gone, oh, yeah, actually, there's one more in my hand basin in our ensuite. Mm-hmm. And so I've said, okay, can you show me? So she's taken me to her bedroom. I've looked in the ensuite, and it's a very small hand basin. I've, she was standing in the back of the bedroom. I've opened it up, and sitting and stuck to the bottom of the hand basin was a giant suction cup dildo with a big set of swingers, and it would have been about as big as my forearm. <gasps> I've, I've just absolutely frozen, didn't know what to do, paused, and then I sort of just turned around and said to her, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, can you please um, remove <laughs> this? And she sort of looked past me, has gone, seen it, has gone bright red, <gasps> and started like fluttering around the room, like doing Fred Flintstone and tippy toes. <laughs> <feet everywhere. laughs> I have then gone, tried to make light of the situation and gone, oh, you know, you've, you've seen one, you've seen them all. I haven't seen one that big though. And she, I'm saying, can you just remove that for me? She has just grabbed it. I've done the job, turned around, and within two seconds, the dildo is gone. I had no idea where it is. I think she's just thrown her on the roof and it's stuck there. <gasps> and Yes, and that's the end of the job. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. So, oh. I mean, not to, I guess we shouldn't speculate, but a dildo in a hand basin? No, it's just, you're washing it off, surely. Oh. No, one's trying to, no one's trying to ride the, ride the, the well, porcelain stallion. <laughs> Sorry, it may not. It wasn't in the. It was in the cupboard of the hand basin. Oh, okay, 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 okay. 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 So it was okay. It hadn't yeah. been recently used right. in the in situ. Uh, um, Tim, oh, well, you can't tell. I don't no, know. that's true. Yeah. You can't tell. You never can. Uh, that's a great start. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, beautiful. And you know what it also had, uh, which we love here on Simba the Jest, mm-hmm. is um, a little bit of a cartoon-like description. Yes, we do love that. <laughs> We're on the, record, on the record for loving it. More <laughs> ending stories after this. Sweetheart. That's Old Nerves on Triple J with Sweetheart. You are with Harper and Hing. You're also joined by Jess Perkins for Simply the Jest. The topic is The End. And the next story comes from Hobart, and it's from Martin. G'day, Martin. What's your end story? Hi, Jess. Hi, guys. My <laughs> end story is about a rather unexpected end of a dive when I used to work as a dive instructor in Malaysia. Ooh. Ooh okay. All right. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, nothing much at all. <laughs> what uh, happened, Martin? <laughs> so um, this was the end, of the end of the season, and we're in this nice remote tropical island, and usually at the end of the season you get monsoon storms coming in, but it was a bit early on. Um, so we're starting a dive, it's all clear, and half an hour in we get a what's called a recall. So it means there's an issue and you have to come up as soon as you can. So I don't know if you've ever done a dive, but usually if you go up, it starts getting brighter and brighter. In this case, it got darker and darker and darker. Oh. Yep. Um, so when we reached the surface, there was essentially a big, massive tropical storm. There's like sheet rain, there's maybe 100 meter visibility, big waves, thunder in the distance. Whoa. Um, probably safer under the water. It, it probably was <laughs> if we weren't two kilometres offshore. Ah. But, <laughs> so our boat driver, which they're tiny little boats, like a glorified tinny, comes to pick us up. Um, and it's myself and a colleague, and he has to get in the boat first. So he takes the diver's gear, and the boat is nearly full, and our boat driver goes, it's too dangerous, it's going to sink. Um, I'm going to drop the people off, and I'll come back for you just to swim to shore. Oh. And he takes us. Oh, no. What? <laughs> so I was left in the water with two highly inexperienced divers um, in a tropical storm and just decided to try and swim to shore using my compass knowing it's this direction and I started swimming. Oh, All right. Um, and I guess <laughs> you made it because you survived to tell the tale. Well, yeah, we, we did. We did. Not after my divers started panicking and throwing up and getting seasick. Uh, so I ended up towing them because they couldn't swim anymore. <gasps> oh, my God. Wow. And the joy of it was halfway through, one of them goes, this happens to us every time. And I'm like, hang on. <laughs> 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 what do you mean? You, I get left in the middle of the ocean every time. <laughs> wow, <laughs> maybe diving just isn't for them. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Martin. Uh, Mark in WA, what's your end story? All right, so I've got like a double end to end story. So, an end of a holiday, 
and a end of a relationship, six year relationship. Wow. Okay. So, exciting. All right. What happened, Mark? <laughs> so I was pretty much asked, well, yeah, asked to go on a holiday, my first international holiday with my ex girlfriend of six years. <laughs> and uh, as we go over there, you know, love, love's in the air, whatever, you know, for the first couple of days. And then it started to get a bit funny towards the end. And uh, on the last night on our holiday, after upgrading us on, you know, our villa, we had a private villa, pool, all that sort of stuff. Um, full, full, everything paid for and full mm. by me. On the last night, she turns around and she goes, oh, I don't love you anymore and I want to leave you. Uh-huh. Oh. Thought, okay, okay, no worries. You know, sort of tried to get a question out of it, and she goes, oh, I just I wanted to do it here instead of home back in Perth, you know, easier to deal with. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Definitely, yeah. No, good. You definitely want to be overseas together in a foreign country just in a yeah. beautiful hotel room. Mm. You don't want to have to fly home together <laughs> having just broken up, do you, Lewis? <laughs> no, certainly not a thing I've ever experienced. <laughs> so, uh, Mark, what did you do? Well, like... Paul Lewis, I had to spend the whole next day with her and the flight home. And when I got back there, I was sort of told, she told me not to tell anyone, but when I got back to the airport, my mate picked me up and he asked how I was in front of her and she proceeded to have a go at me in front of everyone at the airport because I told someone that she split up with me oh, on a holiday. It sounds like you um, might have, it might have been good to get out of that one, I reckon. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, finally, we have Ollie from Kingston in Tassie. What's your end story? Hey, guys. Yeah, so I used to work uh, up on an ecotourism boat in Western Australia and we did our snorkel tours. And uh, at the end of our, our last swim with some manta rays, um, there was this old fella who was struggling to get back to the – he wasn't even that old, middle-aged bloke, struggling to get back to the boat. And so I tow him along, um, get into the boat, and he just couldn't uh, work his legs very well. Um, so I took his fins off for him. He mm-hmm. um, was the last bloke in the water, kind of rushing to get everyone back on board. And um, he just couldn't lift his legs. And so I grabbed his ankle and I put it on the bottom rung and told, said, mate, push yourself up. And uh, he just couldn't do that. So I uh, put my hand on his bum, uh, proceeded to give him a bit of a boost, uh-huh. and that's when everything went brown. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yep, yep. You, yep Jess. You pushed too hard. Uh, <laughs> I, yes, yep. <laughs> and he didn't squeeze. Um, and so, yeah, he clambered off on the boat. Uh, I swam very quickly backwards, uh, everyone's going, what's going on? And, yeah, he pooed down my arm and onto my face. Huh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Stunning. Poo Thank you, face. Ollie. Great we, day at work. Do we feel like we can wrap them up there? Yeah. 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 All Let's right, when we song. come back, punchier stories. <laughs> that is Peach PRC on Triple J with FU Goodbye. You are with Hobber and Hing. You're also joined by Jess Perkins for Sip the Jest. The stories from now on are going to be punchier. We promise. It's our final <laughs> one. <laughs> I mean, we can't actually make any promises. No, but because... we can cut people off if they're waffling, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we say it with love. I yes, mean, it's not always course. easy, but... Um, no, of course, of course. You know what? Mm-hmm. I have a good feeling about this one, guys, because we are about to be joined by someone who has told probably more stories on Simp of the Jest than anyone else. He is, of course, uh, a man who was our Employee of the Year... Uh, you might have seen him at our live shows. You know who I'm talking about. The Crocodile Loser. That's right. He has lost animals all over this country. <laughs> it is, of course, Darren from Glenroy. G'day, Darren. How are you? G'day, winners. I'm good. How are you? Oh, so Dad. nice. Great to have you back on the show for the very final time on Simply the Jest. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good to be here for this this moment. Yeah. yeah, it wouldn't have felt right without you, Darren. No. <laughs> oh, so uh, the topic is the end. Uh, what did you lose this time? <laughs> well, so when I was working for a very small private zoo, I walked into the snake room. Um, uh, was this yeah, like well, for a Saudi prince or something, or was it somewhere in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they were breeding snakes. It was in Australia. Okay. Uh, wow. So I just checked over some of the the um, enclosures, and I noticed that one was empty. 
Uh, and then I looked across at this very large bank of, um, it's like a bookshelf type arrangement, very ha- hard to move, very heavy. And there was just an end of a snake hanging out from behind the bookshelf. Yeah. So I immediately went over and grabbed that end. Um, it was just a pipe and don't worry. Um, uh, okay. and, yeah, uh, it's all fine. <laughs> Yeah, I was stressed for a sec, but I'll chill. <laughs> yeah, good. Just yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't know what was behind the bookcase. So I didn't know if there was like gaps where it could get out of the room at all. So I was pretty much just in a stalemate with this snake. I was held onto it. It was jammed in behind and not letting go. So I was stuck there holding onto this snake, the end of a snake, for about half an hour <laughs> before, before I finally decided to, to come back out the other way and I put it back in its home. Oh, how, da- what's it like? I always um, ask this when you're on, but how venomous is a python? Not venomous at all. They've but- only got about 88 razor sharp teeth that are recurved backwards like fish hooks. So oh, no venom. They, okay. they, they eat you and they, um, they, you know, they strangle you and whatnot, and pythons, you know? Oh, or yeah. They, or they swallow you whole. Sure. Kind of isn't, that, isn't that a boa yeah. constrictor? Oh, they're a kind of that, aren't they? Yeah, they're okay. Well, they, think- they, yeah, they asphyxiate. There's a difference between, yeah. Suffocation and asphyxiation. Oh, right. Uh, okay. the, yeah. It's All a right. legal thing. I shouldn't know that, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been bitten by as many snakes as Darren? <laughs> Have you been involved in as many court cases as he has? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Darren. Oh, oh, bless Darren. you. <laughs> a pleasure and an honour to uh, hear yet one more a terrifying story from you, Darren. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, our next story comes from Charlie in Hornsby. What's your the end story? Oh, it's it's a good one. How are you guys? Very well. What's the story? Very well. Okay, so this one's at the uh, end of a school camp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we went to uh, Southeast Asia for a school camp, Damn. and um, wow. And throughout the time, we were staying in different hotels, and uh, the first hotel we stayed at, I'm going to say the toilet was faulty, and it decided to be blocked. Uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. to no fault of my own, okay? But that does become important later. Um, and throughout the whole school camp, we decided, uh, I was texting, you know, with one of the girls, you know, getting a little bit flirty and decided to lose my virginity that night. Damn. What kind yeah. of school camp is this? You're I'm in a right hotel now. in Southeast Asia <laughs> losing your virginity? Hot damn. It was my favourite story to tell is the fact that I lost my virginity in, in Asia. Um, no, this was with one of the classmates. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, okay. And... Yeah, look, to cut a long story short, mm-hmm. the uh, roommate that I was with definitely heard everything. Uh, and on the last night that we uh, that we wanted to go back to Australia, the night before, I had a mango smoothie from the side of the road but from one of those stands. Um, but in Southeast Asia, the fruits are not that reliable. Mm. And uh, I got very, very sick and clogged another toilet with shit all over the mirrors, all all over the floor. Oh. And I had to get one of the people to come in and use a plunger to uh, to fix the toilet. Oh, now, God. on the way back to Australia with shivering fevers and everything going on, I sat next to uh, the girl I just lost my virginity to on the plane. And while she was having a nap on my shoulder and I was half asleep, I absolutely shat my pants. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm trying to cover this up. I'm, I'm stressing out. So I kind of just get her off my shoulder. I go to the toilet. I wrap up the underwear in, in toilet paper and flush it straight down, never to be seen again. Jeez. <laughs> did, did you, and uh, I don't think she knows still, uh, and I'm going to hope that she doesn't. Did you end up together? To no, we did not. Okay. Uh, uh, can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she did find out. Yeah. Uh, still, Charlie, pretty great. I mean, honestly, right from the start I'm like, this story's got it all. A Southeast Asian <laughs> school trip. Whoever whoever came up with that idea in a high school is crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> a crazy thing to do. It's such school. a bad idea. Yeah, incredible. Uh, and finally, Michael in Melbourne. What is your end story? Yeah, hey guys, how are you going? Good. Uh, yes, yeah, so my end story is pretty much well, the end of a relationship and the end of a was once good but then ended sadly hand job. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. so... Anyway, so I was a bit younger and I was seeing this girl and uh, we went out and anyway, long story short, she was like, look, do you want to come back to mine? I said, yeah, definitely, obviously. And um, she was like, we got back to hers and she's like, look, I'm not really in the mood for the full thing, but I'm, you know, you've been so wonderful. I'm happy to help you out. And obviously I was like, well, that's excellent. <laughs> and um, anyway, so she's obviously performing the hand job as, as it's going. And I said to her, you know, 
you know, this is like, this is awesome. Like, you know, I'm almost at where we are and she's going a bit carried away. And if you, and if you're uh, still have your foreskin, you know, there's a bit of skin that connects your foreskin to the head of your penis. And she's just kind of, as it was almost at the end, pulled the foreskin all the way back and uh, pretty much snapped that string. Oh, oh the frenulum. Yeah, the banjo string, we call it, but yeah. Oh, you know, we've had to learn the name of it because of this podcast. Because of yeah. how many times it gets injured. Oh. Yeah, and it was a bit like, well, wow, like it was just such a shock, but it was like, you know, still finished anyway because, like, we're still in a moment. So, you know, Jeez. you were a bit like, he was like, wow, this uh, was pretty ordinary. And then uh, the next day we, I was like, well, you know, I need to go, go speak to someone, but I ended up was just too scared. So I just put an ice pack on there and the next day we met up and I was like, I don't think this is really going to happen anymore, you know. It's a bit, uh, I'm a bit scarred. Oh, damn. How's wow. The, how's the frenulum now, Michael? Yeah, well, long as there's no foreskin anymore. Like, it ended up uh, all going, I think. Oh, it did. I know that, sure. But, yeah, it was... Um, <laughs> Hang like, on. As a, result, you, as a result of this injury? So you got a hand job so powerful it was a, a brist. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. As a result of that being snapped... Later on, ended in circumcision fully. So, <gasps> oh! there we go. Oh, oh, oh. You had a, oh, hang on. My you God. had a hand job so vigorous, you ended up getting an adult circumcision. Yeah, so that was even worse. Like, I didn't. <laughs> what? Pretty uncomfortable. Yeah, so. Pretty, That's uh, crazy. You, wow. Wow. That's, I mean, hot damn. Whoa. You should be. You, they should take you to Catholic schools and yeah. use you, and oh, use to you teach abstinence. To right. teach abstinence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she should have yeah. to carry a card and say, I am legally not allowed to give hand jobs. <laughs> yeah, you know, like there's, a that, permit. Yeah, there's that thing where they're like, people who do martial arts, it's like, yeah, their hands are weapons. Hers yeah. too. Hers too. <laughs> Hers too. You, that's Whoa. amazing. Thank you, Thank Michael. You, Michael. Wow. wow. Sorry. Here's a little TJ from our feature album. Project Walls is the name of that one. You are with Hobber, Hing and Perkins. We're doing Simple the Jest. Um, someone has said, dudes, you have to come back next week for one more of these. Scrap the songs. They're dead air. More <laughs> stories. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, no. This is the last one ever. If you would like to get a story on Simple the Jest, the topic is the end, endings, anything to do with finishing or goodbyes. Mm -hmm. We'll take them. Uh, but you are running out of time uh, for the very final episode of Simple the Jest. Our next story... Uh, comes from Dana. G'day, Dana. Uh, what's your The End story? Hi. Uh, so my The End story is from a relationship I had in the past. Uh -huh. um, I was obsessed with this guy. We'd been dating for a little while. And uh, around comes my birthday. Anyway, the thing of the story is he was the biggest liar. <gasps> Found out he was the biggest, biggest liar I'd ever met. Okay. What so did he lie to you about? Happened... <laughs> oh, just you wait. Um, so, <laughs> so, the relate, so it's my birthday. My birthday's a day before Valentine's Day. Now. What a double. He told, he told me he had a university lecture and I had to drive him to his house so he could go to this 6 p.m. lecture. I got suspicious and I looked up when the university date started. University didn't go back for another month. Huh. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Uh -huh. Suspicious. Great detective yeah. work. I rock up to his house two days later because I'm still in shock. It's my birthday. There were plans to go to, like, Fraser Island and all this stuff that he oh. bailed out on. Anyway, I rock up to his house on the 15th, and I'm like, all right, you tell me what the hell is going on. And he then goes, fine, I'll tell you. He told me, he lied about having a license. He lied about having a car. He lied about going to university. He lied about his job, and he lied about another girl. Oh. <laughs> so wait, but what about the university lecture? So there was no there was no uni lecture. He didn't go to uni. He was with another girl all through my birthday, all through what? Valentine's Day, <laughs> and then the following day he was with her. So wait, but you gave him a lift. So do you yeah. you, you, you dropped him off at you, the affair. You dropped him off at the affair. I dropped him home because he didn't have a license and he didn't have a car. He told me his license was suspended and that his car had gone through the wreckers because it was in a crash. That's why his license Jeez. was suspended. And he he oh, told yeah. me he had university and every time he went to university, he was seeing this other girl. Damn. Dirty dog. That's like 12 and a half hours a week. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of contact <laughs> hours. <laughs> Plus tutorials. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they were... Maybe, I was about to ask if he had a side piece, but I guess it's almost like you were the side piece with all yeah, of that time that's he was what spending. I'm starting to think. That's what I'm starting And the fact that he ditched me on my birthday, Valentine's Day, and the day after. 
Oh, oh, sorry. The nerd. Dirty and we dog. all know the, the day after play? Valentine's Day is an important day. <laughs> That's right. The 15th. <laughs> Yeah, oh, oh, it was terrible, and he was he was the worst. And then the best part of it, I broke up with him, and for three and a half days after the breakup, he cried and left me voicemails that were like thirty minutes long of him whinging and crying like a baby, like throwing his hands in the air. He would send Snapchats of his face red and blotchy, and like oh my god, coming out of his nose. Dana, this guy's wild. <laughs> Um, yeah. Your life has really fun drama. Sometimes Simply oh, Jess yeah. is just like a fun gossip session. Yeah. And I've really yeah, enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm sorry you went through that. I want, um, I want to sit down and have no I think we should all get brunch. What do you guys think? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, should, 100%. All right, thanks, Sarah. Men are. Yeah, yeah, men suck. Let's get mimosas. <laughs> Casey in Geelong, what's your The End story? Yes, hello. So, basically, we were in high school and I was playing a game with my friend. Uh, I had a pair of scissors, and he was sort of seeing how close he could get a bit of paper to the scissors. And in the process of doing that, he must have got a bit too close, and I chopped the end of his finger off. (laughs) What a surprise, (laughs) given that was such a well-thought-through game. I know. And the very next day, actually, we managed to find that piece of his finger inside my school diary. Oh! (laughs) And top it off, on his 21st birthday, he said to me and everyone else at his party that he actually put that piece of finger in my sandwich and that I am now with him forever, were his words. He fed so you. Absolutely. What? He, he tricked you into eating his own <laughs> finger. Okay. He snuck it into my sandwich, yes. <sighs> Coco, thoughts? I was feeling, you know, a little bittersweet about the end of Simply the Jest, but I think <laughs> I feel okay about it now. Happy for it to end after yeah, that? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Feeling I'm okay with never Parker? hearing I've this again. I've actually made you a sandwich, Perko. <laughs> Can you try it or? I'll tell you where you can put that sandwich, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> How many stories do you think we've had over the years of people to- eating mm. fingers? I More at least- than I'm comfortable <laughs> yeah, with. Fully. I think at least three. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. had one about a chef once who, yep. like, yep, just wanted to try it. Wanted to try it. Yeah. Yeah. We also what? had that story about the guy who cut off a toad and then gifted it to his cousin. Oh, by accident. By accident? The, it just got lost in the wrapping. Amazing. Yeah, God, this. I think we. I think the public needs us to shut this down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think maybe we might be getting close to decision time. We'll see if we have time for any more. But Perko, you might have to do the thing you hate one more time after this. You raise on Triple J with board. You are with Hobber and Ning. You're also joined by Jess Perkins for simply the jest. And Perko, at the end of uh, this episode, which is all about the end, it is time for you now to decide whose story was Simply Jest for this week. For the very last time, Mm. I get to hear this music that makes me so anxious. Gives you the sweats. Yep. And uh, I get to just uh, make a decision, which is super easy and very fun for me to do. Uh, Loved the chaos of Dana um, (laughs) uh, finding out her her then-boyfriend was with another girl on her birthday, the dog. Um, Can't wait to get brunch with Dana. We heard about (laughs) um, plumbers finding um, suction cup dildos in bathrooms. You know, all the good fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think to take out the win, and I don't... I Like, this story made everybody uncomfortable, but it, it... it escalated in such a way that we just did not see coming, and it's this uh, its this story uh, about getting a little bit amorous from Michael. So she's obviously performing the hand job as, as it's going, and I said to her, you know, you know, this is like, this is awesome, like, you know, I'm almost at where we are, and she's going a bit carried away, and if you and if you're uh, still have your foreskin, you know, there's a bit of skin that connects your foreskin to the head of your penis, and she's just kind of, as it was almost at the end, pulled the foreskin all the way back and uh, pretty much snapped that string. Oh, oh the frenulum! How's wow. the how's the frenulum now, Michael? Yeah, well, long as there's no foreskin anymore. Like, I didn't love her. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> Hang on. As a result, <laughs> as a result of this injury, pretty much. Yeah, as a result of that being snapped, later on ended in circumcision. Fully. <gasps> so. I mean, I know accidents happen, but that <laughs> that woman should not be allowed to do that ever again. <laughs> oh, no. It's so full on, and I think to make up for such a full on injury and uh, and to be so scarred from um, sexy time, I think Michael <laughs> deserves a sticker. So Michael is. Simply the jam. 
Congratulations to Michael in Melbourne. You are the final winner of Simply the Jest on Triple J. You win a big red sticker that says I was the best on Simply the Jest. You also win a golden hand tank here in courtesy of Hobber and Incorporated. Now, look, we're not going to be here to check if those prizes are actually sent out to you. <laughs> but I'm assuming aren't. they will be. Um, now, look, thank you to everyone who's called in and thank you to Perk for being here. If you missed any of the stories or you want to go back and listen to old episodes, we actually package this up and make it into a podcast. Yes. And I want to play you guys just a little something, a little tease of something. Now, there's a longer version of this that's going to be in this week's podcast that me and some of the producers have put together. Just something took a lot of work and it won't make a lot of sense to everyone because it's very podcast focus, but there's a special message from someone and I want to play you <gasps> no. a little snippet. Hello, Michael, Lewis, and Jess. I'm Pat Boone. No! <laughs> That's no right. No way! The Pied Piper of Cleveland himself, no! Mr. Pat Boone, what? has gotten in touch with the podcast. <gasps> and no! that full message is going to be on this week's episode of Simple Jest when we package it <laughs> oh up. Oh, my God, I've got goosebumps. Oh, my God! <laughs> and let, let me just say, he's great. No <laughs> way! Okay, your, your face, Perker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. I can't yeah. believe I it. I mean, Nick Gerber, uh, uh, producer Nick really um, hustled for that, so thanks to him for putting wow. that together. Wow. <laughs> but if... So, so look, this episode's going to be packaged up, put into a podcast. It's going to come out on Monday, and in there you will feel you will hear the full message <gasps> from the late great Still Alive. <laughs> Pat oh, my God. Again, this won't make sense to anyone who hasn't heard the podcast. <laughs> Marco, thank you so much. We love oh, you. Love you. See you never. <laughs> Uh, you're invited to the wedding. I'll see you there, Paco. Yeah, true. And then good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ty Verdez on Triple J. You are with Hobber and Hing. And uh, thank you to everyone who got in touch for Simple the Jest today. A lot of people also, Lewis, getting in touch now saying um, thanks for all the years and all the great stories. Um, Pony Skeleton Jess is oh. texting and saying, I'm literally crying. Jess from Goolwa. Yeah. I'm going to miss you guys. Other people saying, Pat Boone! <laughs> yeah. Someone, Some people are very excited about Pat Boone. One person saying, Pat Boone, I'm a regular podcast listener, tuned in today since I've always wondered how the radio show works live. <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I didn't know anyone ever did it that way. Thank you so much. The lyrics are so beautifully written. It's very much a road trip song, beachy vibes. It's just outside of this world. We love music. Triple J. The man who holds the world record for the lowest voice in the world. No. Give me the note again. No. Okay, here we go. Okay, the old perfect pitch is kicking in, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're nowhere near it. <laughs> on Triple J. Good afternoon, Michael Hing and Lewis Hobber hanging out with you on a Wednesday for the very last time. Our final show is tomorrow, Lewis. Yes. But that means today we've wrapped up Simple the Jazz for the very last time. If you missed it, you'll still be able to hear the podcast. Uh, that's going to come out on Monday. Um, and the podcast, Lewis, is going to have a very special message. Oh, my God. In it. And um, I don't know, do you want to play a little, little tease of it again? Or? Well, I will say, again, if you are a regular listener to the Simply Jest podcast, mm. this will be huge news for you. Mm. And if it isn't, uh, this is just three seconds of audio that will make absolutely no sense. Hello, Michael, Lewis and Jess. I'm Pat Boone. <laughs> That's yeah. right. So, so, so if, if you want to understand any of that, go subscribe to the podcast um, and you, on Monday you'll hear a full message from the late, great, still alive Pat Boone. Wow. <laughs> the man for whom the Boonus caller is named. <laughs> Extraordinary stuff. Well done mm. to you and our producer, well, the producer Nick Gerber yes. for getting that done. Uh, now, uh, we do have another item to tick off the bucket list, which yes, is... Yes. Our statues, Michael. Mm -hmm. Now, we are... It's the final item on the bucket list. It's the final item. We've done everything else. We've, We've done... done so much more than anyone expected. Yes. The last one was get statues made of ourselves. And yesterday we talked about where we could install them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said the greatest city in the world, Newcastle. Could we get them into the Newcastle Museum? Yesterday we spoke to the Lord Mayor. Well, we have some pretty huge updates on that to tell you about in a moment. We started off with Golden Features... Flesh and right there, of course, Silverchair, the iconic song, The Greatest View from Diorama. Silverchair, mm -hmm. well, what can you say about them? One of the greatest Australian bands from the greatest city in the world, Newcastle. Uh, now, we found out yesterday while speaking to the Lord Mayor of Newcastle that there actually is a display about Silverchair in the Newcastle Museum. Mm. And we thought, wow, imagine 
what it would feel like to be put in the same building as a dedication to the great silver chair. Um, and today we decided to make that a reality because the last thing that was on our bucket list, our radio bucket list to complete today, first of all, I had to sort out the thing with Ida Butchrose. Done. Tick. Tomorrow you get Man. to park in her car space with her permission. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get to put your own thing up. A beautiful day for hingers. Yes. But also we needed to get statues made that we uh, in two days and installed in the Newcastle Museum. Now, we saw the statues the first time this morning. Hingis and I went to Newcastle, the greatest city in the world. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we looked at the statues ourselves and then we revealed them to the Lord Mayor we, inside the Newcastle Museum. I, I, we can't stress enough, we hadn't seen these before <laughs> we'd already committed to putting them in the museum. So we were there this morning. Yeah. We just had, we, we well, didn't matter what they looked like, we were committed to putting them on display for the mayor and for the wonderful people of the greatest city in the world, Newcastle. So it was pretty, it was a race against the clock when we spoke to our... A TikTok race against the clock. When we spoke to our friend Tank in Shepherd on a Monday, could he get them done in time? Now, the answer to that is technically yes, because he did get them done in time and he has... He now, the question beyond that is, how good were they? You know... We didn't give Tank a lot of time. We gave him very little time. These things usually take 18 months. Yeah, not a day. So this is the moment where I saw my statue for the first time and I'll let you get your own picture about what you think it looks like, but I will say one thing is that they do... They did have our names written on them, Mm. which does, I think, help. But this is um, the big reveal... Of statue number one. I mean, you're wearing a tie. I don't think I've seen you in a tie in a long time. No, I'm not much of a tie wearer. I haven't had these glasses in ten years. I would actually say that that's your nose. I think that's actually your nose. This is pretty good. Hair, don't think so. Why is he giving me a giant mole? I think that's probably a a drill mishap. I don't have a giant mole. Yeah, there was something quite large on your forehead <laughs> that Tank had done. I mean, the, I think they look like a human bust. You know what I mean? It's like a bust shoulders shape. and Shoulders and head. Yep. There was a big lump on your forehead. There's a big lump on my forehead. Um, we both had identical glasses. Well, yeah, but we hadn't seen mine yet. We'd only seen yours at this point. And I'm going to be honest, I think you were a little bit, not disappointed, because I think we understand the, the time constraints. Of course. That we put, but I think in your head... The delusions of grandeur you had <laughs> was that you would have a fully bronze car statue yeah. in your likeness yeah. of you, like, riding a horse, holding a sword, wielding it into battle. Yeah, and instead what I saw was a fake bronze bust mm. of, I would say, a cartoon accountant, maybe. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like if you could imagine a person who had never seen a human being before but had read about them in books. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that is kind of what my face looked like. So it that's was where you were at. Again, yeah. we didn't give Tank very long. He did his best in 24 hours. None, of, hours. none of this is on Tank. This is yeah. all on us. But then it was time to crack open the crate with my statue in it. And let me tell you, um, it looked basically the same as Hover's. <laughs> oh! It's the same statue. No, it's, I think it's quite different. <laughs> it's exactly tell, the same. You can tell it's different because it says... <laughs> So that's why they're different. <laughs> They've got the same glasses. Yours does have a bigger nose. Which I don't think is actually accurate, really. Well. Yes, my <laughs> giant nose. <laughs> Even though Lewis famously has a proud big schnoz. I've, yeah, mine is bigger, but you know what? Your once, nose is so big that when a doctor was fixing your jaw, they said, you want to fix the nose more in there? That's true. Um, but I would say that mine is mine goes out more, mm. but yours is a little bit... Yours has got some oh, breadth. Oh, wider, yeah. So I think he did capture the breadth sure. of your nose, but I think he also gave you a bit of... Uh, protru- uh, protrusion. If you want to see just how <laughs> um, hastily put together these statues were, feel free to go to our Instagram at Not Hobber and Hing Official. We've put up a little video of us unveiling them there. But once we put them in the museum, we put them on these big white plinths, those sort of white boxes, mm. in a proper display right near the steam engine, which was, you know, frankly, a deal breaker for me. At this point, we'd already invited the mayor, and the mayor was coming. The <laughs> Lord Mayor was coming to the Newcastle Museum to see our statues, which were pr- pretty hastily made. Yeah. And now we had to... Rev- and, but when the mayor turned up, well, what was she going to think? Yeah, we had to just cover them quickly with sheets 
so that she um, couldn't uh, back away. Uh There was, you know, her photographer was there. Um, Anyway, this was the moment where she saw them for the first time, the statue she had agreed to install in the Newcastle Museum. So this is the moment of truth. Here are our statues. What do you think? Well, uh, they're unique. They're not exactly identical. Hopper has a giant mole on his head. (laughs) Yeah, I've noticed that as well. Have you had that removed? I mean, (laughs) in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Um, Whoever did it did a great job. Yeah, it's offensive, isn't it? Mm. But at least you can tell us apart. I might have to get one put on. Do they do that? Do they do mole removal? An additional cosmetic mole. Yeah. Well, we are the greatest city in the world. We can do anything. Isn't it crazy how the mayor, the Lord Mayor, I should say, sorry, the Lord Mayor of Newcastle Mm. has adopted our greatest city in the world tag? (laughs) It's so good. It's so good. Move over New York, Milan, Paris, Newcastle. Newcastle it is. Um, And so the mayor has allowed us to leave our statues in the museum, I think, for the next week. So if you're in and around the area of Newcastle and want to go to the Newcastle Museum, it's free entry. And you can go see some statues that don't necessarily look like us, but they do have our names on them, Lewis. They've definitely got our names on them. Uh, We are now installed, of course, uh, in the same building Mm -hmm. as the dedication to Silverchair. Yes. And a lot of people from Newcastle have told us that we have beaten the Johns Brothers. Andrew and Matthew Johns don't have statues. Apparently there's a lot of talk about getting the Johns Brothers statues. Yes. uh, And the fact that we have got our busts in the museum before them, it's frankly... I'd be furious if I was them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, we want to thank the city of Newcastle who have let us do this. Yep. They, uh, like, genuinely, there are statues of us at the Newcastle <laughs> Museum now, which is insane. So thank you so much to them. Thank you to the wonderful Lord Mayor there. And a massive thank you to our artist, Tank, oh, who yes. put these together, we cannot stress enough, in like 48 hours. It's actually incredible that he managed to get anything done. He's an absolute legend. Uh, he's an artist in Shepparton. He makes a lot of fiberglass cows. He does a lot of great work. We love Tank. But you know what, Michael? Yeah? This means that we can cross off the final thing from Hover and Hing's bucket list. We did it, ladies and gentlemen. We've completed radio. That's it. Everything was on the bucket list. It's now done. It's all done. Some of them. Hog the big horn. We had to pivot pretty quickly. Do the biggest radio show in the world. Relative to its surrounds. Beat an Olympian. Fake my death. Do a heist. Do a heist. Solve a fight with Ida Buttrose and install statues of ourselves somewhere in this country. We've done it all, and that means, Lewis, tomorrow we have one day to spare where we can do whatever the hell we want because <laughs> we got a we got a wide-open road tomorrow now. Uh, feels good. It feels really good. This is TK Mitzer. TK hey, Mitzer there, ring-a-ling on Triple J. Uh, you're with Hopper and Hing, and uh, big thanks again to Tank, our wonderful artist friend from Shepparton, who has hastily made two statues that have now been installed in the Newcastle Museum. <laughs> We unveiled them to the Lord Mayor herself this morning. If you want to see that video, go to at not Hobber and Hing official on Instagram. You can check out her, I would say, very generous reactions given yeah. the circumstances. And um, Daniel Johns, if you're listening, uh, we are still waiting for your blessing uh, to be installed next to your exhibit. Oh, damn, yeah, if Daniel Johns is listening, get in touch. Yeah. Uh, but coming up, Hack is on your radio next uh, and Dave Marchese and the Hack team are going to be talking about NPCs, non-playable characters, this um, is like a TikTok trend. It's a TikTok trend. Where people are sort of pretending to, like, not have... To not be sentient, I guess. They kind of like... It's a it's a weird dance thing. There's a, also kind of a school of it that's a little bit sexual as well. It's a bit uncomfortable. Okay. So uh, Dave Marchese is going to be... Um, wading into that. Yes, wading into that quagmire. <laughs> uh, they're also going to be talking about the debate about culling feral horses, which has kicked off once again. Now, I have buried a horse, but I've never killed one, and I need that on the record, Michael. And there's yet, a very important difference. And yet still, you know, and yet still the horses around Australia if you use their enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get up pretty early in the morning. Now, uh, right now, ballpark music, this is called Right Now. Right Now. And that's exactly when we're handing over to Dave Marchese. Oh, smooth. Hey there, how are you? I'm well. I'm going to miss this little cross that we do. Yeah, i, I got to be honest, this is probably our last one because tomorrow we'll probably play like a song we like or whatever to, as our last thing. Mm-hmm. So are you kidding me? Yeah, so we drink it in, Dave. Because I said before, I was like, oh, this is the second last one. You're like, no, actually the last one. Yeah, I think this will be the last one. Yeah. But just so you know, um, <laughs> I'll miss it as well. Well, it's been nice. Not so much that I'll do it tomorrow, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've covered a lot of stuff on oh, this. Sometimes I think we actually get 
more to the harder things in the cross than we do in the show. That's right. That's um, an indictment on your show, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Regret saying that now. Like, oh, actually, no. Uh, no. We love you, Dave. We love you so much. We but do. let's not gas bag on about it now because you've got a show to do. I've got more to say, obviously. We'll get to that tomorrow. But, hey, yes, we do. We have heaps coming up. We're talking about TikTok trends that are all about being the background character. It's no longer about being the main character in your life. It's mm. about being the background character. Safe, I guess. Yeah. So Boring. <laughs> We're getting into that. We're getting into Brumbies. It's a controversial issue. Uh, talking uh, why it's so controversial. Get a bit of the history. All that and a lot more. All right. Thanks, Dave. See ya. Hey! 